It's important. Joining me now is Garrett Reisman, a veteran NASA astronaut, professor of aeronautical engineering at the University of Southern uh, California. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, I, I wonder, as we wait for an update there, you see the countdown going, but there is a moment 40 seconds prior to launch when they might pause, depending on conditions. What's the importance of this launch, especially given that we've seen some hiccups in, in previous tests? Well, uh, you know, a 24-hour, 48-hour scrub is no big deal. Uh, there's no, they're not rendezvousing with the space station. They're not delivering anybody to orbit. So they can do it today. They can do it next week. Um, that's not that, that big of a deal. What's important is that it goes well. And last time, it didn't go so well. Uh, so uh, you, they can hold it at T minus 40 seconds for a few minutes before the propellant gets a little too warm. So they, that's something they have the capability of doing. They exercised that last time and then decided not to proceed. Uh, so far today, it sounds like I've been listening to the count. It sounds like everything's normal. And uh, hopefully we'll go right to T0. SpaceX has launched a lot of rockets successfully, put a lot of satellites into orbit, gone to the space station. Um, in general, it's been doing pretty well. I mean, what are the particular issues? With, are, are they testing something out new here that is leading to these questions? Yes, well, well, the Falcon rockets are getting to be pretty routine and very, very successful, very reliable, and uh, have had quite a track record. This rocket, though, is a different beast. This is Starship. It's uh, bigger than the Saturn V moon rocket by a factor of about two in, as far as liftoff thrust. Uh, it's a monster, and nobody's ever launched a rocket this big. It's also designed to be 100% reusable. That's another very hard thing to do technically. And it's designed to be refueled on orbit. I mean, this is something that has is, is, is a game changer. And so when you're trying to do something this difficult, it's yeah. not unlikely that it's not going to work the first few times. All right, let's listen in now because, as you can see there on the clock, the countdown has begun again. Let's listen to Mission Control. Let's listen in as he take us, takes us through the final seconds of the count. T minus eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have the phone. Vehicle so pitching down range. seconds, a little over 40 seconds into the flight. We are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines ignited. Boosters pushing us downrange over the Gulf. Next milestone coming up in just under 10 seconds is going to be max Q, that max aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. All right, so we're through max Q. That's the, the heaviest stresses it's kind of seeing on the way up. Wow, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> that was amazing. Beautiful views of the vehicle on ascent, pitching downrange away from the launch tower. Next thing coming up is hot staging. So we're gonna look for six engines to ignite on ship while we're still attached to the top of the booster. We'll see all but those three center engines shut down on booster. We're hearing the initial call that we are go for booster catch back here at the launch tower. Coming up now on hot staging, the ship's engines will ignite while still attached to the Super Heavy booster, and also while Super Heavy booster will still be under power itself. The clamps holding the two stages together are going to release. 
and Starship second stage engines will be engine cut off. Ship engine start up. Stage separation. Boost back burn start up. There we go. Ship engines, all six Raptors ignited. We're doing that boost back burn. Looks like we got 11 of the 13 that we command for Cold that. So return. that's going to start sending the booster back. We are still go for booster return, even with two Raptors out during that boost back. We can do a full duration one. Pushes nominal. Looks like we got a ship, six engines heading into space. And then we got a booster hopefully on our way back to Starbase. How's everything going in Hawthorne, Chris? Everything is looking good. The crowd eagerly followed that ascent and now watching the booster coming back. So as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen here, that is ship, ship continuing. And that's a great view of ship continuing on its way to space. They're looking, that's inside the camera, inside the aft skirt, looking at the Raptor vacuum and the sea level engines. The sea level one's there in the center of your screen under our T plus clock. You can see our boost back burn. We're down to three engines on the boost back burn. Uh, and you can see ship on the right-hand side of that telemetry with six engines lit, continuing its ascent to orbit already over 100 kilometers in altitude. The booster 87 kilometers in altitude and continuing its trek right now back to the landing site and catch site. There's boost a back shutdown. And we just heard a good call out for boost back shutdown. The next thing we should see on our screen so, is So at this stage, a successful launch of the SpaceX Starship, which, uh, as we were discussing just before, this is big, big, bigger even than the Saturn V that, of course, took men to the moon. And, and part, is it not right, of plans to go to the moon and beyond? Uh, that's part of this plan going forward. That's a big part of it. Uh, it's designed so that you could fill up the gas tanks again once it reaches space and orbiting the Earth. And if you could do that uh, and get a full tank of gas, you can then take this starship and go pretty much anywhere in the solar system, including not only to the moon, which NASA intends to use it for, but even onto Mars. So that's why this thing is uh, a real game changer. They have a way to, to go, uh, though. It's today, so far, so good. Uh, in a few moments, they're going to try to catch that booster coming back down with those chopsticks. That's always a, a real crowd pleaser and a very difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. But for me, the most interesting thing is what happens with the ship when it comes back to the atmosphere. That's the thing that didn't go so well last time, and that's what I'll be watching really closely this time. Yes, yeah, they always say space is hard. And, and that piece, the, the retrieval piece, the reusable piece, is, is one of the innovations of SpaceX that, that, that really is truly remarkable because, of course, for, for decades, those pieces just fell into the ocean. I mean, the, the, the booster rockets for the space shuttle fell in the ocean and were reusable. Uh, let's look at this next stage. But landing themselves, pretty tough, right? <laughs> pretty tough thing to do. Yeah, when uh, we first tried to started trying to work on this with the Falcon rockets, people told us we were crazy. It'll never work. It's too hard. It's not efficient. But uh, they, they made it work. And um, now, you know, so far twice, they've managed to catch this booster. They're going for number three uh, in just a, uh, just a short while here. Well, we'll continue to monitor. Uh, thanks so much to former astro astronaut Garrett Reisman as we watch that SpaceX rocket continue to soar. Well, China